Good morning. Happy New Year to you. Welcome to our worship service here at Grace. I am Jim Miller, the senior pastor here, and to all who are joining us online, we are here in Gaithersburg, Maryland, and thank you all who are present this day. I'm so grateful that we have this opportunity to start the new year together. We usually have and will next week resume our 8 o'clock and 10 a.m. services, the 10 a.m. continuing to be online and in person. But now and then it's good to get together for one service where we get to see one another and interact and so glad that you are here and you are starting the new year off on a great way by taking time to worship. I invite you to take a moment here. There is a registration book that's found in each of the pews. It's just a notebook binder there. If you'd take a moment and sign that and pass that along to the person beside you, we'd love to keep track of who's here and we are so grateful that you're worshiping with us and for those of you online or Zoom. If you would uh, join us in the chat, please. We are just uh, so glad that you are here. Much is happening in the life of the church, and so I remind you to visit our church website at graceumc.org. One thing that is coming up that I wanted to lift up to you is our chili cook-off and table talk. That's happening this coming, a week from today at 4 o'clock, which is our usual youth group gathering time. Our youth will be here, and several of you have signed up already. In fact, the announcement will run again at the end of the service, the little app there that you are able to zoom in on and register online, so you can do that before you leave, or if you're online, you can take care of that at before you log off today. We look forward to your participation and to the special time of gathering as we will be having table conversation about youth ministry, how important it is that we give thanks for our youth who are part of the church today and look at the ways we can continue to offer ministry to our young people in the community. Today as we gather, we will be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion. So I invite those of you at home to have some bread and juice handy, and to all who are gathered here, this may be your first Sunday here. You do not have to be a member of this church, or of any church for that matter, but if it's a closer walk with Christ that you seek, all are invited to come and to partake. Gluten-free elements will be available as well. I do want to uplift as we pray for our church community, a service celebrating the life of Leah Flory, will be held here at Grace this coming Saturday morning at 10 a.m. So again, we want to continue to keep Leah's family in our prayers, and we'll be celebrating her life. Uh, The Gunderson family, we want to be praying for Narajan and Diana and Kanya Sanders. Uh, uh, Diana and Kanya's brother David passed away this past week, and so we want to be uplifting the family during this time. And I also want to say a special word to Gwen. Uh, Gwen is in the hospital. She wanted it to be known that uh, she is dealing with COVID. And so this continues to be out there. And it's just a reminder that all of us continue to practice our safety protocols. And uh, Gwen, uh, as we talked yesterday, was very determined to have the phone number so she could dial in to our service this morning. So Gwen, I wanted you to know that we are praying for you and are so grateful for you and blessings upon the new year. And I know she'll be cheering for Penn State this afternoon from her hospital room. So all you Penn State fans and praying for us Ohio State fans who are still a bit uh, shell-shocked this morning, why we give thanks for our times of fellowship. And Gwen, we are praying for you. Now let us continue in our time of worship as we join in our call to worship. And I ask you to respond where the bold print appears. A new day has dawned, a new year begun. O Lord, call us so we may hear your voice. The world turns to hopes and dreams of the future. O Lord, keep us in your ways and on your path. We enter this new year with hope and excitement. O Lord, remind us that you lead us. O Lord, guide us as we look to you and worship you. Amen. And now let us continue in prayer. God of all time, we praise and adore you for breaking into the darkness of this world with the glorious light of your presence, a light which made your love for the world visible in the babe born 
in Bethlehem, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. A light which guided those gift-bearing travelers from afar to find and worship the Christ child. A light which leads us to you, now revealed in Jesus Christ. We pray that you will accept our worship, for it arises from hearts and minds in awe over the enormity of your gift to us of pure love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand as we join in singing our opening hymn found on page 220, Angels from the Realms of Glory. This is why we are here. We have gathered to worship the newborn king. Welcome. I invite you to be seated, please. At this time, I'd like to say a special word of welcome to our children. You are such an important part of our church community, of our life together. And so I want to invite those here to please join me up front. And to all of you who are joining us online, so glad that you're here. Happy New Year to each of you. And some are already enjoying our professional nursery care that we offer each Sunday, so they're having a good time there. So good morning to them. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. I've been very lonely up here. <laughs> Thank you. So grateful, Lauren, for all that you do. So, Lauren, you may recall that a couple of weeks ago during a children's moment, we had a discussion as to whether there was an angel or a star on our Christmas trees at home. And that discussion permeated throughout the sanctuary and online. I've heard from a lot of folks telling me why that's important to them, and that, that's pretty much down the middle there, stars or angels on there. And so we, we talked about the angels a couple of weeks ago, how God used them, of course, in, in the lives of, uh, well, from Zechariah to Elizabeth to... Joseph, uh, Mary, to uh, the shepherds, of course. And the angels have been busy, almost as busy as you have been here helping with our service. They were busy there. But how about the star? Why the role does the star play in this Christmas story? Well, as you remember, it's a very important to our day of Epiphany, isn't it? We celebrate the arrival of the Magi. They followed that star. 
to worship the newborn king. Now, we don't know exactly. There's a lot of things we don't know about them. Uh, were they really kings? How soon did they come? We, they join in our scenery here, but it probably was a while before they actually got to arrive there, and they were probably astrologers. They paid a great attention to the sky, so we don't know a whole lot about them. But what we do know is the fact that they did follow, that God reached out to them and showed them the way. And that's what the, the word epiphany, that appearance, that manifestation of the star, and later it would be a text from some of Herod's own followers, and a star again, and later a dream, God was providing them guidance. And that's something for us to hold on to into this new year. Now, one thing I don't like, um, I love this season tremendous. It can never start too early and always sad to see it end uh, in that way. But so often come the day after Christmas, the music stops playing and some even take the decorations down. But actually, Epiphany is the 12th day of Christmas. So we think of that song there in that way. So we are just in the midst of our celebrating leading up to January 6th. And of course, that date has been in the news a lot there. And that's really, I think, part of the transformation is to remind ourselves, yes, that horrible events that took place on January 6th, but we go deeper and remember the day of Epiphany as January 6th. Again, God providing guidance to the Magi. Herod told them, hey, once you find him, let me know so I can worship him too. But we know from Herod that that wasn't sincere. He was threatened. And sometimes we are threatened by what a life of following Christ would look like how sometimes we would have to be asked to do things we're not comfortable doing or reaching out to somebody and talking about faith or taking a stand for justice when we see injustice in our world. It's not always easy being a follower of Jesus. But what we're reminded of by, again, this story, this epiphany, is that Jesus is with us. That's why we don't really need to star. That's nice to have it on our trees. And not so much about dreams, but rather we have Jesus promising to be with us always. And that's something that we celebrate. So Lord, as we continue to celebrate this service, this day of Epiphany, let us give thanks and may we look to Christ to always guide us in our everyday living. And to all of you, thank you for being part of this journey as we walk together. An Epiphany celebration, we give thanks. Thank you for coming up. Did you see that the children get these in the back? I don't know how to get them to you online, but they're epiphany stars and bells there, okay? And that's we can do. Thank you, Lauren, so much. Thank you. Today we offer this prayer of intercession for epiphany. I invite you to hear these words as I offer them. May our hearts be open to God in prayer. In the silences throughout these prayers, you are invited to hold up to God, either silently or aloud, the names of those you remember, especially today. Bathed in starlight, we pray together to the one who created all things, saying, Show us your child, O God. For we observed a new star at its rising, and have traveled far bearing gifts. Make your wisdom in its rich variety known through all faithful people, and give your holy church grace to bear the gifts of truth and love to all your children on earth. Show us your child, O God, for we walk together in faith. Give your justice to the nations and their leaders, and give your mercy to all whose decisions affect the peace and well-being of the world. Where we have power ourselves, open our ears to the cries of the weak, the poor, and the needy, and open our hearts to answer their call. Show us your child, O God, for we walk together in hope. Bless this community.
that in your light we may each become a servant, one to the other. Bring us together in story, song, joy, and sorrow, and let every daughter and son who comes among us find kinship in this place. Show us your child, O God, for we walk together in love. Have mercy on those among us who journey in sickness, fear, or any kind of trouble. Meet them on your road with rest, peace, and good cheer. Show us your child, O God, for we walk together by your side. We remember those who have died. Your star goes before them. Show them your child, O God, for they have traveled far to be with you. Dear God, with longing and thanksgiving, knowing that you hold this world and all its children dear in your heart, we pray this day for the grace to receive your gifts, to lift up our eyes and look around, and to offer back those same gifts to you and your world with love. Show us your child, O God. For we observed a new star at its rising and have traveled far bearing gifts. To the one who is the road on which we travel, our companion along the way, and our journey's end, we pray in boldness, and confidence through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now I invite all who are able to please stand as Storm shares with us this morning's Gospel reading. Morning, church. Today I'm reading from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had stopped, that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then they opened their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. Thank you. I invite you to pray with me. Lord, we thank you for this day of Epiphany, for this Epiphany celebration. We thank you for all obstacles that have been overcome, that we can be present, whether online or in person. And now, Lord, like the Magi, may we truly pay attention to how you are reaching out to us this day. Lord, may our hearts be open to all that you have to offer us, we ask, in the name of Jesus, whose birth we continue to celebrate. Amen. So this is our Epiphany Celebration. You may be thinking, oh no, not one more celebration. It's been a week of celebration, probably, I'm sure, for, for many of you. And uh, 
Uh, like yourselves, that's often the case in my own family as well. We had a brief time in Ohio this past week, so it was always good to see our loved ones and get together. And over the years, it's always been a week full of activity, like going from house to house to the various relatives and meals, and uh, we would gather together, but always on New Year's Day. There's a wonderful restaurant near where I grew up called the Dutch House, which is a wonderful Mennonite restaurant. It makes me hungry just thinking about it. Well, on New Year's Day, they offer a special breakfast buffet. So during our family gatherings and getting together, we would say to one another, so are we going to the buffet this year? And I can remember my dad saying, no, 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 we've, we've had enough, but we would always end up there every year. Like it seemed, it was a needed time together. Not that we necessarily needed another meal after all our family gatherings, but rather it was a time to gather before we would go our separate ways to deal with the responsibilities and the challenges of a new year. And so I am so grateful that we have this opportunity to gather at the Lord's table this morning on this New Year's Day to begin our journey together. I think it's so powerful to think about in this way, and I I love this account that one author offered about this special day. He wrote, The account of the Magi's visit to Bethlehem and their worship of the King of the Jews becomes a critical episode in the larger story of God's redemptive plan for humankind. Salvation comes through Jesus the Jew, the fulfillment of the prophetic dreams, but it reaches far beyond to strangers from the east, to a Roman centurion, and to a Canaanite woman. At the end of the story, it is no longer a matter of non-Jews coming to Bethlehem, but of Jewish disciples going out to all nations. I think about the specialness of that gathering. Well, Betsy and I stopped at the Dutch House restaurant on our way back. We went in and the crowded and the waitress, like many places, it was understaffed and she was doing the very best she could and uh, and she got to us and brought us our food. Some of it spilled on the table and then we didn't have utensils to eat with and had to ask. She said, oh my goodness. She said, uh, look at me. Uh, uh, your food spilling. Utensils not given to you there. This is terrible. <laughs> Betsy, being so compassionate, said, no. Don't, don't be worried about this. This is such a blessing. You see, uh, for Jim and I, this is where we went on our first date. And it was 30 some years ago. And she just sort of stopped. The waitress did. Just sort of took that in and said, wow, she said, thank you. She said, oh, I get to be part of your your special gathering. It seemed to just in that moment bring a comfort and a moment to realize that she's part of something very special. So are you. So are we. We are all part of something very special as followers of Jesus Christ. Here was this important point where the Magi, discovered in their lives, whatever it is we know about them or don't know about them, they recognized that there was a need for them to find this one born king of the Jews, despite what they may have had in in riches or, or in popularity or wherever they were in their life. They recognized the need to pursue this Messiah, and they made the journey. You, in being here, and gathering with us, are recognizing that there is a need in your life that only Jesus Christ can fulfill. We can have many other things, many important things in our lives, many important people in our lives, and they play a very important roles. But the most important role, the most important one, is whose birth we join the Magi in celebrating and pursuing a needed relationship. And yes, 
this wonderful transformation. The Magi, they were, they were Gentiles, God working through the Jewish community. But now, the word going out to all people, it's for everyone. So it is for each and every one of us. We enjoyed our meal and was going to pay the bill. And they're very smart at the Dutch house. They have their bakery right there, as well as their gift shop that you have to walk by all these items before you make your final purchase there. And so another person, again, she was trying to handle everybody arriving at once at her counter. And there was one little boy, he's about the age of my granddaughter, three if not four. He apparently had too much sugar or too much Christmas, so let's just put it that way. He was energized and he wasn't about to stand still. And he found his way behind the counter, behind this person. So she's trying to wait on us. She said, oh, we've got a visitor here. She's saying to her other colleagues and he works his way around and she says, look at him. He thinks that path is going to take him to where the toys are, but it's a dead end street. And sure enough, he realizes that, and you see that moment of panic, and he turns around, and he comes back to where his father is trying to corral him. But just in that moment, we see that glimpse, that epiphany, that many are going down serious dead-end paths in their lives. Whether they are struggling with addiction, whether they are in a situation where they are the victim of domestic violence. We heard on the news the awfulness of crime and the human trafficking right here in our own community. Dead end paths. That's why the ministry that we offer with our youth, with our children, with our young adults, with our older adults is so vital in growing our community. This is a needed community that we must continually be Sharing the good news. Look what the Magi did. Yes, rather naively, some would say, they go in and ask Herod. We, we saw this star that's rising. So they go to Jerusalem asking we, and saying quite uh, boldly, we want to worship this newborn king. Well, that gets Herod's attention. He calls in his helpers there and he says, is this so? And they dig out this old text from, from Micah and say, oh yes, born in Bethlehem. And gives them this instruction where they are to go, find this child, and let him know. In that moment, the Magi, in their own way, Herod was saying more than he knew. He was saying, go and find him and, and come and tell me so I may go and worship him too. Herod was saying that, yes, this is what he needed to do, but wasn't doing it. So many are crying out for help. As we think of our situation at the border, so good to have our lay leader back with us this morning. Amy, so glad that you are home here and know there are powerful stories that you will be, be sharing there. So much need right around us. What is God highlighting? Your testimony, your presence is so important to be sharing. I've read recently the story of a couple who were seeking to adopt an infant into their lives. They were traveling to England for this adoption. You can imagine all the red tape and everything they were working through, some of you of going through this process. Well, the day finally arrived for them to receive their new child. They went to the agency office. They walked up a stairway. They were greeted there and sat down and they waited there. A few minutes later, they heard somebody else coming up the steps and entering the room beside them. They could hear the muffled conversation and soon the whimper of an infant, and they realized it was the birthing mom bringing her child. They heard some crying and wondered about the agony of that moment. But very soon, the director came in with their newborn son, he had a change of clothes with him, and there were two letters. Two letters from the birthing mom. One of them was a letter written to these new parents saying, Thank you. Thank you for your willingness to become my, my son's parents, and I want you to know I will respect your privacy and the rules we've agreed to. I wanted to thank you. 
But then she also had a second letter. The instruction she gave was, I would love to have this letter read to my son on his 18th birthday. Again, I'll respect and hide identity. And that letter was given to their lawyer for safekeeping. But you wonder what she wrote in that letter. Her one opportunity to address this one. Did she talk about the weather? I don't think so. Politics? Prices? Economy? No. I bet she got to the heart of it all in expressing her love, her adoration. Imagine with me if you had such an opportunity where you have that one opportunity to tell someone else about Jesus, what would you say? What would you tell them? What would you write in that letter? The Magi, they didn't mess around. They said, we're, we're here to worship. We're here to worship this newborn one this king of the Jews. This was their priority. With all the resolutions you may have already started or begun, where is Christ in your life? Does he have that priority? Where is the star, metaphorically, shining in your life? The star, we're told, it stopped over the place where the child was. Where is the star, star metaphorically stopping in your life? Where is the presence, the strength, the wisdom of Christ needed in your life in this world? Sure, we can say everywhere, and that's true. But specifically, what is God pointing out to you, placing on your heart? Only you know that. What is it that God is bringing out in your life? Well, once they received the text that it would be Bethlehem, they started back out again, we read in the scripture, where the star once again would lead them. They set out and there ahead of them went the star where that they had seen it, it's rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw that star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold, recognizing Christ as king. Frankincense, that was an incense that was used to recognize the presence of deity. They were recognizing that he is God, he is divine. Myrrh was an ointment that was used, a salve, often used to, in the embalming process, recognizing that he would give his life that we may have new life. These gifts took on deeper meaning. I hope that's been the case in your life and will be in 2023. That your journey with Christ will take on an even deeper meaning. It was a couple of weeks ago. I often get accused in our household, I'd bring up the Christmas decorations and put them away and sometimes things that shouldn't be put away get packed away sometimes and such was the case this past year and I brought up the items and uh, amongst the items I brought up here was a pair of cowgirl boots that we had bought for my daughter when she was a teenager. Now she's soon to be 21 so they wouldn't fit anymore and my wife Betsy said, well, what, what can we do? Why don't we sell them? I'm going to sell them online. We'll have a little bit more money to spend on Christmas. I said, that would be fine. So she did whatever you do to do that. And somebody agreed, was interested, and they were in touch with one another until it came time to pay for the boots. And they uh, were trying to use a Vimo or a PayPal or one of those other ways of paying, and it wasn't working out. But then when Betsy talked with her some more, she found out that the woman was a fellow nurse a single mom who was trying to come up with gifts for her children. And so Betsy said to her, she said, you know what? J just take them. Said, Don't worry about the money. And so we paid and shipped them off to her, and she had them for Christmas. Betsy said to me, she said, well, I, 
messed up on that one, didn't I? We didn't make any money, and it cost you money to ship them. I said, no, not at all. You helped bring back what the true meaning of gift giving is all about. And of all the wonderful gifts that we exchanged and had as part of our celebration, I think of her reaching out to that fellow nurse, mom, and offering this gift beyond the economics, beyond any calculation, was the joy that somebody else experienced through the gift. That is the gift that we have to offer in our community, that we celebrate now as we come to the table. The joy of knowing the presence of Jesus and through worshiping him, through the opening of our gifts, the offering of ourselves to him, It may not bring you more money. It may not bring you more fame, popularity, or possession. But it brings a deeper joy. And sometimes when we feel like we messed up, my words and my testimony weren't effective, or I tried to reach out to that relative or or to that neighbor and it didn't work, God is willing to enter into the messiness of our situations and work in powerful ways. In fact, We're called to do that as the church, to address some of the messy needs that are around us, helping those with the inadequate housing, who are going to bed hungry, who feel they are not loved or valued. I close with what Reverend David Luce once stated when he put it this way, Epiphany isn't an easy sermon to preach, but it's a necessary one to hear that the world is difficult, that many entrusted with power are not trustworthy, that many who are well-intentioned will fall prey to manipulation, that far, far too many children are threatened and sacrificed to violence, but also that God is still at work, at work for the sake of the vulnerable, at work on behalf of those fleeing violence, at work for the sake of the world not only in mysterious or intangible ways, but also through us. God is fashioning the people in our pews to do God's work in the world, to take stands against leaders who manipulate through fear, to offer shelter and sanctuary, to advocate those who have had to flee their homes, who resist oppression and violence and manipulation. God is at work in us, fashioning us to be bearers of the light that has come into the world, the light that the darkness neither understands nor has overcome. God is at work fashioning, that is, an epiphany people. That's us. People of the light. People who know that the joy and grace of Christmas is not a gift to be admired, but one to be put to work for the sake of the world God loves so much. How might God use our lives this year? What needed gift do you bring to the body of Christ? It starts by availing yourselves. The Magi knelt and presented their gifts. And God warned them in a dream to return to their country by a different route so that Herod wouldn't get them. Why was Herod so worried about an infant babe born to peasants, placed in a manger? because they recognized the implication of the birth the minute they hear what, was imp- what impelled the journey of the Magi. If there is a new king who can inspire people to undertake a strenuous journey to an unknown location so they can pay him homage, so when others see in you the magnitude of your effort to lead a Christ-like life, your life will have a profound effect upon those around you. That is our opportunity that is before us. So I give you these challenges as we now come to the table. I invite you to reflect on the statement shared earlier. At the end of the story, it is no longer a matter of non-Jews coming to Bethlehem, but of Jewish disciples going out to all nations. What does this statement mean for the church today, for us to be going out? Secondly, prayerfully consider, what is God seeking to reveal to you this year? Where is that star shining in your life? Lastly, what will others see demonstrated in your life in regards to being a follower 
of Jesus Christ. Your life is needed. Your commitment is needed. I celebrate the commitment you renew as you come to the table today. Amen. We give back to God. As the Magi brought their gifts and presented them to the Christ child, so we present ourselves. And we take this time to present our pledges, our offerings, to continue the work of Christ in our community. We invite our ushers to come forward as Debbie shares with us a special music. Thank you, Debbie, so much. I invite you now to join me in our words of the great thanksgiving as they are found on screen, and we will sing our responses. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born, in your signs and witnesses, in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and online, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now, as children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for us, the blood of Christ shed for us, God's true gift offered to all. All are invited to come and receive. Amen. The ushers will guide you to come forward and receive. You're welcome to partake of the elements back at your seat or to take them home with you. Both are appropriate. And again, those of you online, we invite you to partake at this time.
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this holy meal. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence and through this mystery be drawn even closer to you. Thank you for the opportunity that in this meal we are reunited with those we cannot see but know are with you. And for each who are grieving, Lord, comfort. And for all who are seeking, Lord, we thank you for this needed celebration. Thank you for the epiphanies that are occurring in hearts and lives right now. Thank you for the powerful ways that your Holy Spirit is at work. Lord, you have given us the ultimate gift in Jesus Christ, the gift of new life, a gift, Lord, may we not pack away with the Christmas decorations and leave to another season in our lives. But here and now, O oh God, we are reminded of our need for you and thank you for that holy desire to be part of your community, to be making a difference in this world through the sharing of your love. For all who need to know that they are loved, for all who are in harm's way, for all who are struggling, for all who are taking a break from the journey, thank you for this moment of awakening and realization that your light is shining upon us and you are ever so wanting to guide us into a deeper relationship and into greater work. Bless and guide us each one, we pray, in Christ's holy name, amen. I invite all who are able to please stand as we join in singing our closing hymn, We Three Kings, found on page 254.
Please be seated. I look forward to our next Sunday morning experience with you. Again, we'll be offering our 8 o'clock service, which always has Holy Communion, and our 10 o'clock service in person and online. Next Sunday morning, the focus will be on the text of Jesus being baptized, and we will have an opportunity as a congregation to remember our baptism. So for those of you at home, please have some water handy for our gathering next week. And again, to carry with you this week, and these also will appear in grace notes, I invite you to reflect on the following. Think again about the statement at the end of the story, it is no longer a matter of non-Jews coming to Bethlehem, but of Jewish disciples going out to all nations. What does this statement mean for the church today? And secondly, prayerfully consider, what is God seeking to reveal to you this year? What will others see demonstrated in your life in regards to being a follower of Jesus Christ. God will work through you. Let us avail ourselves to God. Now as we go forth, the light of the star, the light of God's love, shines before you as you leave this place. Go in peace. Go in joy. Go in love to meet God's people in the world and greet them with the good news of salvation. Amen. Thank you.